Hey everyone, Mike from MyTechie here. Welcome back to another SQL tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the SQL basics, and I've put a number one afterwards because I'm going to do a continued series of SQL basics. Today we're going to be talking about how to attach a database, the difference between attaching and restoring a database, common mistakes and misconceptions that people make upon attaching and restoring a database, we're going to back up a database, and we're also going to restore the database as a different name. If you don't have a database that you have because you're not a programmer or you don't know how to create databases yet, you can always download the sample database that Microsoft provides at the Codeplex website. I provided the website here. You can pause the video, copy the URL. I will also include it in the description within this video. So, with this being said, let's go ahead and get started today. And we're going to go to our SQL server that we had before, the SQL 0301. We're going to open up our SQL Server Management Studio. And because I logged in as a different user that I originally installed SQL Server with, which is the administrator, I'm going to go ahead and log in with the SA user. If you watched the previous tutorial, you'll notice that I created the mixed mode authentication, which means I can log in with the SA account or a SQL authentication account rather than just logging in with a Windows authentication account. Notice that you have an authentication drop down here and you can change it from Windows to SQL. If you're logged in as the original user that you installed SQL with and you added the current user during the install, you can always just use the Windows authentication. They will allow you to go ahead and connect in. Today we're going to use SQL authentication. I'm going to type in my password. Now it is a good practice that you do not remember the password, especially if you're using a default administrator account. As if any other person in your network, such as a principal, connects in and they want to go ahead and log in to the SQL server and they're using the administrator account, they could use Windows Authentication. However, if you disable that user from logging in and you only have your user to log in, if you remember the password on accident, he can potentially connect in and do anything he wants. So we're going to go ahead and cl click on connect. And notice how I have several different things on the left hand side. I have databases, security, server objects, replication, and management, and of course our SQL Server agent. We'll get on to that later. So today we're going to be solely talking about a manual backup and a manual restore and a manual attach and a detach. So right here if we expand databases and we click on the plus sign if you install the reporting services you're going to get two databases right here saying report server and report server temp database okay we're not going to mess with those databases today we're going to assume that you went ahead and downloaded the uh, sample database from Codeplex and we're going to use that for an example today first things first we can't mess around with the database if we don't have it attached to our SQL server. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and attach the, C the database to the SQL server. And the way we're going to do that is two options. We can go down to Start, My Computer, C Drive, Program Files, Microsoft SQL Server, and then you're going to go into this one that says MSQL10 underscore 50 point MSQL server. Now this might look a little bit different depending on what you've actually done uh, within your uh, system in the sense of uh, what version you installed so on and so forth. Note that you see that it says MSQL here not MSRS which stands for reporting services or MSAS which stands for anal analyzation services or analysis services. So we're going to go ahead and open up this SQL service which is our database engine we're going to go ahead and open up the MSSQL folder underneath. And notice how we have several different folders here. One is the backup folder, the bin folder, the data folder, the FTP data folder, or file transfer data folder, the install folder, jobs folder, log folder, replication folder, and upgrade folder. We're going to only mess with the data folder and the backup folder today. Right now, you're going to need to go into the data folder. Now notice you have many different databases already in here, but the, the key thing to remember here is that all of these minus this, 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 this 
are actually all system databases that need to be intact in order for your instance to run correctly. Note I have the AdventureWorks LDF and MDF here. Okay. Now, the LDF stands for the transaction log file. Okay. The MDF stands, I uh, actually don't know what it stands for, main database file, I believe it was for, primary database files, as they call it in the Windows help. Uh, but I think it stands for main database file. This is where your actual true data resides. You can actually blow away your LDF, and if your MDF is intact, you can actually go ahead and recover your LDF file by creating a new one because all the LDF does is store the main transactions that modify a database such as update, delete, replace, and drop. Now with that being said, with those four commands always being uh, inserted into the log file, theoretically you can recreate your entire database by having a log file or a transaction log file that's completely intact. So it's very important to back up your log file as well. The reason why I've copied them in here is because if you notice, if we go to the properties of this particular folder and look at the security, there's going to be a local user group called SQL Server MSQL user dollar sign the, the server name dollar sign the instance name. Now this is very important because if you do not give access to this, SQL cannot read and write from the directory that you specify because it doesn't actually use the Windows pass-through that you're currently logged in with. That's only to authenticate you to the SQL server. This is actually to now read and write from the NTFS system and you're going to need to go ahead and enable this user group for any folder that you create if you want to store it outside this main data folder. So now that we've copied them in here, we, after you unzip them and copy them, we can now rest assured that if we right click on databases and we've left our default data path alone and go to attach database, we can then click on the add button and you can see right away that we get the AdventureWorks MDF file. Now notice that the LTF files don't actually show up in here because again they are not really databases. There's nothing but a transaction log file. So we'll highlight this. It'll fill it in. And we'll select OK. Now notice right away that it tries to grab the log file as well. And the log file is actually referenced within a metadata of the main database. So if we go to the ending of this, you'll notice that you'll see AdventureWorks LT2008 underscore data MDF, which is true. And if we had our log file on a separate rate array or something like that, we can actually go ahead and change where the log location is because logs tend to, to get big. And if you don't want to ever truncate your log, it's a good idea to actually put it into a big location, uh, if a big rate array or a big hard drive that you guys can expand quite quickly. Now notice that it has the exact uh, location of the log file. If that log file was missing or was not available, you would actually see a message over here and it would say, hey, you're missing the log file. And you would have to actually go ahead and browse out and point it to the correct location. Since we just downloaded these, they're going to be definitely be intact. So we're just going to go ahead and say, click OK. And that's it. We attach the database that easy. Now, What's the difference between attaching a database and restoring a database? There's actually really no difference other than the fact that if you detach a database and reattach it, let's say to move it from one SQL server to another, you're actually going to be taking that database offline. Okay? You'll be actually removing the database from it, again, detaching from the SQL server. So if any user or application needs to get access to that database, they will not be able to. Now, if your goal is to actually move the database in general, then that's actually not a bad idea, especially if your database is quite large. Um, now, if your goal is to copy it over to a, a, 
a sandbox environment where you can test on the database and do other things on the database while the production environment is not affected you can actually do a backup while people are in the database live within the database and that's one advantage of doing a backup and you can bring it over to your uh, production or your sandbox database and restore it and actually go ahead and start doing testing there if you want to rename files you could do so as well just keep in mind if you do detach a database and rename the file you're going to definitely need to go ahead and update those paths when you reattach the database and the same concept goes for when you restore if you rename the original LDFs and MDFs before you back up and restore you're going to have to replace those within the recovery options and we'll show you that in a moment so again there's really no difference and that's the biggest misconception that there's a big difference between attaching and re uh, detaching and restoring and uh, backing up and there's really no big difference other than the fact I guess this is a really big difference that you're taking the database offline with that being said uh, another big misconception since we're on that route here is that people think that when you attach a database or restore a database that you're restoring the logins as well um, when I say that let's say for example you have one SQL server you detach the database and you reattach it to the other SQL server SQL server number two for example if you have any SA logins or any SA credentials minus the SA user so if you have like another user you created for a specific application but is a SQL login not a Windows login a SQL login and you bring it over to your other SQL server even if you have installed or created that user on your other SQL server the actual SQL server itself knows right away that that login that's currently tied to the database belongs to a different SQL server so you will not be able to use that login to log into the database you would have to delete it from the database go into your current login that you have set up on your SQL server and re-map it to the, uh, the database that you just restored or attached. That goes for both, again, attaching or restoring a database. The biggest misconception is that SQL logins transfer. They don't. So another uh, misconception is that Windows logins transfer. Now Windows logins will transfer if you're using a domain environment. So if you have several different Windows logins and they're both in the same domain and not in a different domain, they actually will transfer. So if you logged into a machine and went over to the other machine and logged in as, for example, in my case, Mike Daniels, and I have Mike Daniels on the first database as well, it will transfer because it are, it's part of the Windows environment rather than part of the SQL environment. So the SQL environment stores them locally rather than the Windows environments within the group policy in the Active Directory. So now that we've covered that, we're going to go ahead and show you on how to back up a database. Notice I have this AdventureWorks database right here. Now I want to back up this database. Now I'm not going to detach this database because I don't want to go ahead and remove people from using the database currently. I want to just simply back it up because I want to keep a, a backup of the database, and B, I might want to move it to a uh, sandbox environment later on. 